Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Blender. And today I want to take a look at how you can take a rough sketch and turn it into vectors that you can then work with inside Blender. And to do that, we'll be using the excellent open source application called Inkscape. And I will put a link to that in the description. So anyway, let's make a start on this. So here we are in Inkscape. And the first thing I want to do is to come to File and Open and bring in the thing called Logo Example. And I'll obviously give you a link to this and my fish example as well. So open this up, uh, say yes in this dialogue here. So we want this Trace Bitmap menu. Now what we want to do is click on our image there. You'll notice it's pretty rough. And what we actually need to do is we need to adjust this threshold till we get a good impression of our logo, but we don't get any of this ridiculous nonsense. Obviously I drew this on the back of an already printed sheet of paper, which was a pretty silly thing to do, but you know, it, it um, makes the challenge a little bit more interesting. So increase that threshold. So we're just getting the logo, but not that printing on the back. And in this case, I'm going to increase the speckles all the way up to the top. And what that'll do is it'll help to fill in these cross hatched areas much better. And I'm going to leave the other options as they are. And then I'm going to hit apply. And that's actually done a pretty good job, not given us too many problems that we need to sort out. So then what we can do is come to path and simplify. And the shortcut for that is control L. So I'm going to use that and I'm just going to use it a few times until it sort of simplifies this to the point that I actually want it. It's probably maybe even up to about eight. So you see, we've really smoothed that out a lot. And then if we want to make some fine adjustments, we can click on this tool here, the node tool. And we can, for example, just select a node and using the arrow keys, sort of move it around. And let's come make this a little bit wider here by bringing that one up. And maybe even we can delete points. So I'm going to delete that one there, just makes for a smoother curve there. Maybe delete that one as well. That's too much. You don't want to be deleting control points like that. You want to select them and then just adjust their handles like so. But anyway, I'm not going to get too carried away. I think this is good enough for us. I actually quite like this kink on the O there, so I'm going to leave that in there. So something like this is going to be good, I think. So then what we can do is we can export it and we can come to the export page here and then come down here and navigate to where we want it to go. And we want to export it as SVG. So that's plain SVG here and save it out. Then over here in Blender, this is the default scene. I'm going to delete the default cube and I'm going to come to file and import and I'm going to import scalable vector graphics. So it's SVG. I don't want the grease pencil one. I want this one here and bring in that logo example SVG. And that comes in very, very small as you'll see if you zoom right in there. So what I'm going to do is holding down the alt key drag over those scale values and set that to 15 and set the X rotation to 90. Right click on the object and set origin to, I don't know, either of these two at the bottom here. And then just backspace on those location values there to center it all up. So we've now actually got our object and you probably might then want to just convert it to a mesh, for example. And you could certainly go this way. It, depending on how well you've tidied it up, you might actually run into problems. But I don't actually want to do that. I want to do something a little bit more interesting. And that is in object mode to add mesh cylinder. Let's come down here. I want to make it a nice smooth cylinder. So I'm going to go for 128 vertices. And in the front view here, I just want to increase the radius so it's wider than my logo and the depth so it's deeper than my logo. Then I'm going to take that logo path and I'm going to move it out on Y till it's in front of my cylinder. So look at the front view. That's going to be good. So then I'm going to come back to the cylinder and I'm going to come into edit mode and I'm going to Control select the path 
or I could grab it from the viewport. Come back to the front view. It's quite important to do it from the front view. And then come to Mesh and Knife Project, like that. And now if we turn off our path, you'll see we've actually cut that logo into the curved faces of the cylinder. And this is really nice. So what I'm actually gonna do is, while that is still selected, I'm gonna hit P and I'm going to separate that as a selection. So then let's select the thing that we've just made. So that's cylinder 01. Let's come into edit mode. Let's select faces, select one face, A to select them all. E to extrude, and let's just extrude it out like that. So now we've got a cylinder background and our logo that's actually curved around the cylinder. So knife project is a really, really useful uh, tool if you're not familiar with it. And in terms of this workflow, it's gonna give you a much better mesh than if you used convert to mesh. So I just wanna say a word about shading. So let's come over to the shading tab. Let us select our logo, so that's cylinder 01, and let's make a new material. Uh, let's just make this, I don't know, let's just make it dark enough to differentiate it from the background, make it, make it metallic and very specular and not very rough, so it's nice and shiny. And then what I wanna do is I wanna give it a bevel. Now, I wouldn't even think of trying to go in and bevel it in the normal way. You're just gonna get into all sorts of trouble, but there is a an easy option here, and that is to add a bevel node here in the shader, and then take that output into the normal input of the uh, principal BSDF. To see this, we actually need to switch to cycles. I'm gonna switch to GPU compute. I'm just gonna reduce the number of, of samples. And then if we come to the rendered view, probably not actually gonna see it because the position of that light. So I'm just gonna move that light. Let's move it to sort of there and then render that. And you'll see we've got a nice edge to our logo like that. Probably makes sense to parent the logo to the cylinder so we can rotate it all around like that. So if we want to rotate the cylinder, we can do that and then render that. And you can see that is actually quite a nice effect. So finally, let's take a quick look at our fish. Over here in Inkscape, I'm going to open it up. So what I've done is actually to avoid the problem of the trace being too messy, I've just filled in these areas with a, a marker pen or a Sharpie probably you'd call it if you come from that strange place across the water. So kind of trace bitmap. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to just set the threshold again to be what I want it to be. I don't actually want the, the speckles to be too high. I'll show you what happens if we have the speckles too high. The eye disappears. So let's just undo that. And I'm gonna bring the speckles down to around, I don't know, sort of 20 or something like that. That's pretty good. So again, we could come in here and we could manually do a little bit of editing in Inkscape but let's actually just do it again in Blender. So we're gonna come over to the Export tab and export that in the same way as before. Then over in Blender, let's delete the default cube. Let's bring in the fish that we've just made. And again, it's coming very small. You know what to do. Drag over the scale using the Alt key, set it to 15 rotation of 90 on X, right click, set origin to the center, and then backspace on the location, and we're all nicely centered up. So that's our fish. Uh, I quite like this kind of rugged uh, look to it. That's why I didn't actually do any cleanup in Inkscape. I do think there are some areas that are probably just a bit odd. So let's just edit, say for example, that, select those points, X and delete vertices. And you know, you can go through and delete anything you don't like. I'm going to come into object mode. And this time let's actually just use a plane instead of a cylinder. So mesh plane, rotate it through 90 on X. Let's set the scale to two. Let's select our fish and move it out in front of the plane. Let's reselect the plane. Let's come to edit mode. Let's control click on our path. Make sure we're in the front view, come to mesh and knife project. It's a little bit more complicated. It took a few seconds to think about that. If I turn off my shape, 
let's have a look at what we've got. Now you can probably see that it hasn't actually separated out all the things that we need separating out. So what I need to do is come into faces mode and with the shift key, deselect some of these areas that are actually meant to be cutouts. So all of these, just refer back to the original if you're not sure and the eye of the fish as well. There you go. And this little bit down here. So those are all the things that are meant to be cutouts. I'm going to hit P and separate the selection. I'm going to select what we've just made. You come into edit mode, faces, select one, A to select them all, E to extrude. And now I've got my fish like that extruded off my background. So what I really like about this technique is that we can keep so much of the kind of organic quality of that original sketch and bring it in as nice clean vectors that we can manipulate in Blender. So I hope that's given you some good ideas to play with. Thanks very much indeed for watching. Hope to see you again soon.